Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to continue on in our consciousness and sleep unit looking at the different dream theories. Why do we dream and what do our dreams mean? So let's go ahead and take a look. There are several different dream theories that exist that help us to understand some of the possible reasons for why we dream and what our dream means. So we're going to take a look at each theory on this chart and talk about what this theory tells us and what are some possible considerations or criticisms to this dream theory. So the first one we'll look at is Freud's wish fulfillment. And if you think that your dream has a hidden meaning, then you believe Freud. The psychoanalytic interpretation of dreams, according to Sigmund Freud, says that dreams are the fulfillment of our wishes. So there are things that we get to do in our dreams, our unacceptable thoughts and desires, we are allowed to act them out in the process of dreaming when we can't do this in our waking life. So Freud called dreams the royal road to the unconscious. He used dream analysis as a way to reach our unconscious, and he called it the psychic safety valve that allowed us to release those unconscious and unacceptable urges in a way that is healthy because we're not acting them out in our waking life. So the big idea here is that dreams have hidden meanings. Freud and his followers also believed that dreams were full of symbolism and it requires interpretation. So we have two elements to our dream, the obvious or manifest content, which is what actually happens in the dream, and then the latent or underlying content, and that is the hidden meaning of a dream. So saying goodbye to someone in a dream might mean that you wish they were no longer in your waking life. Saying goodbye to them is the manifest. The desire to rid them of your social circle would be the latent or underlying content of that dream. If your dream reflects recent day's events, such as people, places, things that have happened, then your dream might fall into the information processing theory of dreams. And this theory tells us that dreams happen to help us to sift through the day's events and store the important information in our memory. And there's a lot of research that suggests that REM sleep does help with memory storage. So that's the really big idea here, that we are consolidating the day's events, going through that information, and storing it into our long-term memory. And that's why we might see people, places, things that have happened to us recently showing up in our dreams as well. The third theory looks at what did we do in our dreams? So not so much about the content and the story, but what different actions? Were you walking? Were you talking? Were you running? Were you playing a sport? What was it that you were doing in your dream? And what might be the physiological benefit that that has for our brain? So the physiological function theory of dreams tells us that the neurological activity during REM sleep actually is giving our brain stimulation. It's helping preserve neural pathways. So long-term potentiation, myelination, is happening while we're dreaming. So studies have shown that as you're dreaming, if you're talking to someone in your dream, even if you're not talking in your sleep, your brain will light up in the areas where speech production is. If you're running away from a monster in your dream, the part of your brain responsible for muscle movement will be lighting up as if you were running away. So the different activities and actions that your brain is engaging in can actually help increase the neural pathways of those different actions and activities in waking life. So you're basically practicing in your sleep as if you were actually doing it, and that can help make us better. The fourth dream theory helps us explain why some dreams are super random. So if you've ever had a dream where it seems like these images are coming out of nowhere, you walk through one door of a classroom and you end up in a room in your house and it seems like there's not a really strong sense of time, then it might be the activation synthesis model of dreams that might help explain the dream that you're having. So the activation synthesis model essentially breaks dreams down to two parts. The activation part 
is that the brainstem is activating different areas of the brain and that these images are completely random. The synthesis portion is that your brain takes these signals and gives them meaning, attaches memories and emotions and sensations to these images to weave them into a story. So the dream itself is very random, but then you choose to act upon the images that you see in a way that gives that dream meaning. So the idea here is that whatever we see in a dream doesn't really have a major meaning behind it, but we could still argue that we choose to interact with these images in a specific way. And that reflects something about the cognition of the dreamer themselves. Finally, the last theory would ask the question, do you have a lot of nightmares or are you faced with a lot of challenging dreams? And that might help with the cognitive development theory. So according to this theory, dreams are useful for cognitive development and problem solving. Basically, the idea is our dream gives us problems, sometimes in the form of really terrifying nightmares, and this allows us to think about how we would figure it out. We do this when we're daydreaming as well. We sit and we think about problems we may never be faced with or that we could possibly be faced with, and we think about how we would solve it or address it. So it makes sense that our brain continues to do this when we're asleep, giving us problems and challenges, giving us scary images that we have to encounter and face. And the idea with cognitive development theory is that this makes us better problem solvers in our waking life. So maybe this is a bit of a positive twist that you can put on having nightmares. They're never pleasant and we might not want them, but perhaps our brain is doing us a favor by giving us these nightmares to make us better thinkers and problem solvers. So if you can think about it that way, then maybe the experience of having a nightmare won't be quite as detrimental. So these are the different perspectives on why we dream and what dreams mean that you can then go ahead and use in your own life to help you understand the dreams that you are having. Thank you so much for watching and remember, be kind to your mind.